Hi guys, welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video we are going to be covering how we can create lights that we can turn on and off inside of a level. So first thing we're going to need to do is we're just going to need to create a light that we're going to use. For this I'm going to be using a point light, we can see here. And just to make sure that I can see the full effects in the game I'm just going to blast its intensity a little bit and then change its colour to a red. There we are. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, we're going to do two different types of lights here. We're going to do one that turns on when we enter a specific area, and then we're going to do another one that we can turn on using a switch. So for one that we can turn on by walking into an area, it's actually quite simple. So we have our light here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my volumes, and I'm going to find a trigger volume. I'm going to drag this out and I'm going to place this near my light and then I'm just going to scale it a little to say maybe this big. Now I'm going to select the light and the trigger volume and head into the level blueprint. Oops. In fact I'm not because I need to reference these separately. So the light, and I'm going to right click inside the level blueprint and I'm going to create a, a reference. Then with the trigger volume selected, I'm going to say on begin overlap. And because we have the trigger volume selected inside this blueprint, it will automatically have the trigger volume. I then also need on end overlap. There we go. Now I need to tell it what I want to overlap with this. So it needs to be our player character. So we're going to cast to and we're going to find our character. In this, ex in this example I'm using the third person character from the default template. <coughs> Excuse me. And now what I'm going to do is from the point light we're going to toggle visibility. In fact, can we just put this straight in? We can. I have a feeling I've selected the wrong visibility. Double visibility. Oh no, we have to have the light point component in there. Cool. So, we're just going to plug both of these casts in here. And I will compile this. And now with the light selected, I actually want this to start invisible. So, I've got the trigger volume selected, dope, pick the light and then we'll scroll down to rendering visible and we'll turn that off. Now if I press play, when we enter the volume, the light comes on. And when we leave the light turns back off again. So. That's how we can do one using player placement. So you could have this be maybe a motion sensor or something. Something similar to that. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a, a blueprint that will let us turn this on or off with a switch. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click blueprint class actor and I'm going to call this light switch underscore BP. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to add a component. This is going to be a static mesh and I'm just going to grab a cube and I'm going to quickly resize this and this is going to act as my switch. I'm just going to lift this up so that it's not quite on the floor. So this will be a switch. Now you'll have a, an actual static mesh in here, no doubt, or something like a little button. Um, but for this, I'm just using something to use as a reference. Now we need a box collision. And what I'm going to do is quickly scale this, place this into a nice little location. There we are. 
so this will represent the area that our player has to be standing in to activate the switch. I'm just going to take the box on the left, drag it under static mesh, so these are now parented, so if we move the static mesh at any point, it will also move the box. I'm going to go into the event graph, and I'm going to... Hmm, what are we going to do? We're going to delete overlap and event tick. In fact, we're going to delete the event begin play as well. So now with the box selected, we need a new event. So in the details panel, we're going to scroll down and we're going to get on begin overlap. There he is. And again, for on end overlap. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say... I cannot spell today. Oh no, I know what I want. Where are you? Blah blah blah. Right, um, here it is. Enable input. I forgot the word enable. Can you believe that? And then we'll say disable input. There we are. And now we need to get to player controller. And we're going to plug this into the player controller here. So now if we're inside the box, the blueprint can now get inputs. If we're outside the box, it can no longer get inputs. The reason we have to do this is because by default, our blueprints are not able to receive inputs because if every blueprint could receive inputs, then every single blueprint in our projects would be continuously listening for an input, which means every single one would read any button press made and it would just become a very expensive process if you had too many of these in there all listening at the same time when they don't need to listen or to save no nope. so i'm going to say if they're in there it's going to enable inputs now what we're going to do is we're going to say i will say keyboard e so this is the button we're going to press to turn on or off our our light and what we're going to do is we're just going to go into variables we're going to add a variable and we're going to call this is on question mark and this is going to be a boolean which is a true or false statement so what we need to do is we're going to get this and now we're going to branch and we're going to look at the, we're going to plug is on into the condition so what this is now doing is it's is is asking when e is pressed is the light on or off if it's on we're going to do true if it's off then we're going to do false so at this point by default the light is going to be off we're going to start with it off so we're just going to leave this unticked in the default value so if it's off then we need to create another variable in fact so we're going to get a variable and this is going to be point light and if we find point light here, we can reference a point light. We're going to just quickly name this and we're going to say, uh, we'll just call this light. And now, excuse me one moment. I was getting a little bit raspy, needed a drink. Now, we're going to expose this by clicking the little eyeball next to the light in variables on the left. What this will allow us to do is to plug any light into our blueprint so we can use this with any of our point lights. If you want to use a different kind of light then you can quite easily just add another variable uh, for a different light. So here we actually have this set to point light but if we were to search for a skylight, you can see we've got skylight, we can also use a... oh god my brain is like gone today. We can get a directional light that you can see there and a spotlight. But for this I'm using a point light, so I'm going to make sure that this is set to point light, so we can plug in a specific light. So, is the light on? No it isn't. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to grab a light, get this, and we're going to say... Toggle. Visibility. Of light component. And then we're going to grab the is on, and we're going to set this to be on. And in the other side, what we're going to do is we're just going to copy all of this and paste it. 
plug the true into here and then at this point we'll set the light to be off. And we'll compile that. And we will take our switch and I'm just going to put it here. Yeah, that's going to be where our switch is. So, missed the piece out, didn't I? Now, now that this is in the level, we can officially give this a a um, light reference. So I'm just going to pull it out from the wall a little bit more. Uh, you can see now in the right-hand side, under details, under default, we actually have our little light variable. So what we can do is we can click this little arrow to bring up all the lights in our scene. You can see point light here. Now, this is the point light. And just to make sure that we're getting the right one, I'm going to just quickly rename this. Ooh, where is it? Come on, let me rename you. I want to rename you. Oh, I am so silly. Uh, Dean is silly. So I've called that light Dean is silly. Now, if we go into here, oops, into our blueprint, under light, if we click this, you can see Dean is silly. There it is. So we'll click that. And now we're definitely using this light with this blueprint. So can we do this with another light? We can. So if we were to grab another point light and pull, uh, place this down and we say this is going to be a blue light. We will quickly call this. Dean is less silly now. If we go into here and we go here, we can see that now we have the other light there. And we can switch between which light we're actually going to be using. So I'm going to press play, the light's still on. And if I go here now, while we're overlapping, if I press E, the light turns on. And if I press E again, it turns off. If I'm not inside that box, if I press E, I'm pressing it. Hear me press it. Then it, you, it will just not turn the light on. But here, we can, in fact, switch the light on and off. Because we're overlapping with the system that says that we're within the control area. Ooh. Because we've got both now, I'm still toggling it by moving in and out of here. But that's just because we've got two different controls for it and we don't really need that. So to make sure that this definitely works, we're just going to change this to the other light. And now we are going to... There you go. You can see we're toggling this light on and off instead. So there you have it. Some really simple ways of doing lights in Unreal um, using light switches and proximity. So we can in fact do this with spotlights as well. So if we were to quickly test this out, if I drag this up, in fact, yeah, let's drag this up and we'll just change this one's color to green because I can't help myself but have a little bit of green and we'll make it a bit more intense. And we'll default this to be invisible and we'll just head into the light switch BP we can go to this light and we're just going to change this to a spotlight. So spotlight reference. Yep. There we are. And it's just going to change some stuff. Because it's going to break some things. So we just need to plug this back in. We're not going to bother indexing this right now. We'll quickly compile. And now if we select this, we have no light in there. But we now have a spotlight. And if I head into... The level we can now use the spotlight instead so this should work with any type of lighting because all we're doing is we're turning them on or off as you can see there so hopefully this has been helpful for you guys and you know i'm sure that many of you can use some of this stuff in your projects um so yeah, that's it. It's a short but sweet one today. Um, I shall see you guys next time.